Welcome back to the Yellow Card Vanguard channel. I'm your host Toku from It's Toku TV on Twitch. Every Monday I'm streaming Vanguard content and the past few Mondays we've been brewing up clan collection lists and testing them. So swing on by to be part of the process. We're now on day 11 everyone and a Giraffa makes a return to the game in clan collection and boy was it a great return. Mega Colony historically was always an underplayed clan and this is most likely because of how many bug fixes there needed to be. It seemed that throughout the V era, Mega Colony never really found its identity as a clan. From playing off of tap units, then milling your opponent's deck, and then playing with cradle markers. This already small clan now has to spread its card pool between three different playstyles, and it's my job to find the best cards across them and mash them into one. I'm happy to say that Giraffa isn't bound to a former Mega Colony philosophy, but plays off each of them very well and thus uses the generic support very well as well. The new Grade 1 is Pupa Mutant and Giraffa. On Ride, you can discard a normal unit to search for a Giraffa unit that matches the grade of the card discarded. And when placed on rear, you can Soul Blast 2 to draw a card. However, for each opponent's tapped rear guard in the same column, you can reduce this cost by 1. This card could be better if you could Soul in the card instead of discard, but it's already really good to ensure your ride chain. And B, it's a rear guard that instantly replaces itself for an easy to meet condition. The grade 2 is Elite Mutant Garafa. From either Vanguard or Rearguard Zerbo, you can counterblast one on attack to gain 5k for every tapped rearguard your opponent has. Then, if they only have one or less rearguard, you can draw a card too. His second effect locks your opponent's rearguard that are in the same column in place, preventing them from intercepting or moving to another circle. His most important effect is the first skill. On average, gaining a trigger's worth of power, this turns him into a not only a great attacker, but effectively being once per turn, on attack draw a card. Finally, the new boss unit, Evil Armored General Garafa. On Vanguard attack, you can counter blast one and soul in a rear guard. This forces your opponent to call two cards from their hand to a rear circle as rest. Those cards are then hexed to not stand on the next stand phase, and their on place effects do not activate either. The second skill gives him an extra 5k for every unique Garafa in soul, and if you have two or more names, and your opponent is grade 3 or higher, he also becomes a base 2 critical. Garafa does it all. This is the boss unit. Unless your opponent has unique ways to play around it, his first effect is essentially a two card hand tread, potentially two retires if they're forced to call over filled rear circles, and potentially another two retires they then have to call another two units from hand to replace the called one. His second effect, as long as you're riding to the grade one and the grade two, should always be live. A re-ride gets you that last unique name you need for the 15k buff, effectively letting you become a 27k crit vanguard with a hand rip two on attack. Then we have the new heal trigger queen Agria. I think it's an auto included in this deck, A because it provides a counter blast going first, B because it can transition from grade 2 to grade 3 a lot easier, and C because it is a grade 3. I'll elaborate on this once we get into the core. So to start the core off, we are obviously going to be running full playsets of the Garafa Ride Chain. That's 4 Pupa Mutants, 4 Elite Mutants, and 4 Evil Armor General Garafa. Now I'm going to define the win con of this deck. If you notice, there is the small package here of 6 grade 3 cards, 3 Pinsir Attack Mutant Intrude Scissors, and 3 Unrivaled Blade Robe. Cyclomitude. Intrude Scissors by himself enables this deck to become a potential 5 attack deck with critical threat. Let's quickly run through our lethal turn. We call Cyclomitude and another attacker to our side column, and then we'll attack with both rears before attacking with Garafa. We can use Cyclomitude's skill to gain 10k and potentially a crit until end of turn. And note that this is not once per turn. If any of these three attacks go through, we can then aim for the push. After attacking with Garafa our Vanguard, the Intrude Scissors in our drop zone will activate, allowing us to counterblast one to call it to rear over the not Cyclomitude rear guard. We'll use Intrude Scissors on play skill to gain 10k, but to also restand the Cyclomitude, which keeps its 10k and maybe the critic gained from its skill, and any other triggers we were gotten off of Garafa's drive check. Then we can swing with both Cyclomitude and Intrude Scissors to try and close out the game. There's now 15 slots left that we can use for Tex and Fetcher. With how many Grade 3s I've opted to run, I wanted full playsets of Little Dorcas to find Cyclomitude, our second copy of Garafa to ride into, and in a pinch, Dorcas has the ability to fetch an Intrude Scissors and ditch it immediately to keep it live in the drop zone. I also ran three copies of Machining Mantis. Mantis is not only a good call to rear, 
He's also a serviceable ride if you weren't able to find the grade 2 Giraffa in time. Mantis is also a 15k attacker that lets you replace itself with a grade 3 in hand. So our lethal turn uses a minimum of 3 counter blasts and can go up to 5 counter blasts to double Sokomatu and to make the other rearguard more threatening. We need a lot of counter charge in this deck. The last 8 slots were all reserved for methods of counter charge. I'm currently juggling between ratios of mutant gentleman high class moth and small captain butterfly officer as easy to access counter charge. High class moth has the benefit of being a grade 3 in deck allowing us to grab it off of both Dorcas and Machining Mantis. However, its counter charge effect is a hard once per turn, meaning multiples are dead in hand. As such, I chose to run two, one to keep on board, and one backup just in case it gets spot removed. To fulfill the other counter charge engine, I've opted into three copies of Butterfly Officer. Its skill plays into Garafa's condition very well, being able to suck the grade 2 Garafa into soul at the end of turn should we not have ridden into him. In conjunction with the grade 2 Garafa, it also refunds its counter blast cost to draw. And unlike High Class Moth, this is not a repeatable method of counter charge and is dependent on us drawing it. Our final 3 slots went to Bloody Hercules. Bloody Hercules has the benefit of being both a source of counter charge when its attack hits, but also being a valid attacker when boosted by grade 1 to hit 23k alongside its first skill. We are going for a standard trigger lineup of 8 crits and 4 draws and no, more importantly, 4 grade 3 heal guardian. This deck then runs 16 grade 3s, 14 cards that are naturally grade 3, and also 2 high class moth. This way, our counter blast on Machining Mantis should very seldom be wasted, as although it's painful to remove a heal trigger from deck, a card in hand is a card in hand. Now, it's a very unique concept. Our list, as it is, is more combo based, but when one thinks of Mega Colony, our mind kind of drifts towards some sort of field control through stuns and such. In which case, if you wanted to build for this, we could look for cards that focus more on the resting of cards. Our Grade 1 and Grade 2 Garafa cards have their conditions met a lot easier. There aren't a lot of rear guards that do this, but Machining Lady Bomber can rest your opponent's entire board and also provide counter charge, being a 2-in-1 card for our deck. Fear Attack Mutant, Mega Rancer, fulfills a similar role to Elite Mutant in being a large attacker based on tapped rear guards without requiring counter blast. Now, there are a lot of cards that provide counter charge. If we're still looking for some, as stated before, Machining Lady Bomber plays into the resting of rear guards and counter charging. Stealth Millipede then offers your opponent a really tough decision between letting its attack or its boosted attack hit. That way, we gain a soul and a counter charge, or they don't let it hit, and their rear guards in that column are then stunned for their next turn. I personally love the idea of this deck and will probably be picking it up. Fun fact about me, I'm deathly fearful of insects in real life, but in media forms, insects are cool. Very strange. I think this deck can sit comfortable in high tier 2 or 1.5, as it's able to produce a surprising amount of power of pressure on its turn, but despite having a good amount of counter charge, needing to counter blast that much for your game plan is a setback. In any case, that's all I've got for you on today's segment of Clan Collection, and I will see you guys tomorrow. Now buzz off.